In this video we're going to be going over a trench type dirt hole set. With this set you don't need a backing but for video purposes uh, we'll be using this small little grass tuft. But what this set gives you the advantage of is you don't need a backing. You can set this wherever you'd like um, as long as you construct it properly. But I like to clear out the earth like uh, we do in pretty much all my sets except for some flat sets that I will be making shortly. And then I take my groundhog tool and I go to the base and I kind of make a V. This kind of gives you a pattern that you can follow whenever you go to make your trench and the earth just comes peeling back super easy. So I like to go down deeper towards the grass tuft and then I kind of start going on an incline up towards where my feet are. But that's about four inches deep right there and when we take the groundhog tool and go down it's about maybe five six inches deep now and we still have that lip in front of the hole this is a great set to use and this is probably one of my go-to sets that I like using uh, there's just so many advantages with it if you get dirt stuck in your groundhog tool just take your driver and hit them together and that usually pops the dirt out really really easy uh, instead of trying to put your fingers in there and pry it out it's a lot quicker and then I just go as deep as I can with the groundhog tool I like to use the groundhog tool it makes a nice perfect hole for me um, I know a lot of people use like the augers or just your average trowel but uh, with the groundhog tool I don't have to worry about batteries running out or anything like that or carrying excess stuff that I don't really need so get as much dirt out as I possibly can and then I um, kind of wall her out the hole and then run my finger around the hole just to kind of make it not look so cut, cookie cutter in appearance make it look kind of like something's been going out and then we start working on the trap bed so I've got that lip in the front there and then we're going to kind of angle up towards my feet um, this isn't a step down set this is more of like an angled in set um, super easy and super quick to make once you kind of get the hang of it but you're just going to pull that dirt back and then you know, make sure you've got everything bowled out the way you want it. And then we'll go and we'll start, you know, doing the same thing with the super stakes on the Duke 4. Uh, I do like those Duke 4s and that Lady Slipper, that's a, it's a good setup. I'm going to start running them probably about every trap I have now. So we'll go ahead and anchor the trap. And like I said, I you know, V out from that grass tuff and I don't offset on this trench set. I set straight on with the hole with my levers facing the hole. So the reason I do that is you'll have two sidewalls on each side and an advantage that it kind of gives you is if they try and shoulder roll you from the side, they're not going to get down into your trap bed because it's got those sidewalls protecting it. The only way they can get down into it is if you know, they kind of come down your your angled in slope kind of like a, a landing strip at an airport or something like that so I still like to have that big trap pattern um, like I do on my dirt holes the only time I don't really like to have a big trap pattern is with like a blended in flat set or something like that but so I'm angling up uh, the closer you get to the hole the deeper it gets and then as you kind of get back towards where my knees are it starts to kind of level out with the ground so it ends up working out really nice. Um, Duke 4 sets in against these side walls really nice and with uh, you know your trap bed being bowled out it just anchors into the ground and it's super effective. So we'll just take that excess chain like we do and hammer it into the ground and emphasize that bowl shape and then you're just going to take your trap and you're going to crunch it into the ground I uh, kind of get up and put all my weight on it but you can see where the lever is and it's sitting in front of that lip of that hole so whenever a coyote or a predator comes up and tries to scratch at your hole, dig at your hole, they're not going to flip your trap up because you've got that lip protecting it and then I just pack some dirt right by the lever where the jaw is and then I like to pack on the other side as well and then I'll end up pushing some dirt down into where the front of the lever is that's towards my knees. But as you can tell, it traps solid, it isn't going anywhere. 
so it's pretty much you know 90% better at this time and we'll take the excess dirt and we'll just kind of sift over and then pack the trap in so we've kind of got those side walls on each side on the left and right and it acts as like a funnel um, you know the predator or coyote doesn't want to really step on a angled slope I have seen them do it but more times than not they're going to be stepping in to where your pattern is and from my you know perspective and my opinion I, I think if you have a, a bigger trap pattern they're not going to be so leery and so um, neophobic to you know kind of coming in and being a little bit more comfortable with that pattern it's kind of a little bit more natural to them so just pack around the pan it's a big pause I trip pan on those Duke fours but they end up working nicely so and then you know make your pattern and then I brush out from where the lip of the hole is kind of make it look like something's been going in and out take a little extra ground coverage and blend your set in and pack everything down and you want them to be comfortable when they're stepping there you don't want them to you know be sinking all the way up to their ankles or knees whenever they're walking up to your set because then that's when they'll start digging now that's pretty much your finished set all we really have to do now is um, put our guides in I like to put my guide in by the dog side of the jaw where the dog is uh, I uncover it scrape it back and then you know, put in a little stepping guide there something they don't want to step on and time to turn them and make them place their foot along the pan side and then up on the left you can see a little bit of piece of grass there that's kind of acting as a guide as well and then all you have to do is bait I will get into baits later but I will say that I do like to use a fresh bait and um, like a glen lure or um, some caster or some mink gland as a, as a mix up sometimes but there's the set and you've got a pretty big platform and you got these side, wall, side walls on each side you know there's and right there they kind of act as a funnel and as a pretty much a natural guide to, in themselves really and just to show you the trap does fire and like I said you don't really need a um, backing with this um, but that grass tuff was kind of helping me illustrate some points and that's your trench set.